Let's ask our political panel, Jamu Green. She is former 2008 Clinton campaign advisor and Republican strategist Philip Stutz. Thank you both for joining us. Morning. Uh, Good morning. Philip, I'll start with you this time. Uh, can sure. she unify the party? What does she need to do? Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm convinced that it's less unification and more consolidation. Look, both of these uh, candidates are not very popular. Uh, yet, if you look at the polling right now, you're at about 45% for each. So it's about 10% of the vote still to come. Uh, Hillary believes that if she's, as to quote uh, Barack Obama, more likable, uh, that she can kind of consolidate the remaining vote and get to the majority. Uh, I would tell you Trump looks at the WikiLeaks and hopes that it continues to drip, drip, drip out, and that that is, in a way, the way he consolidates his vote by getting people angrier and madder at the system, and, uh, and that that's the way he gets the majority. Well, Jammu, there's still a number of Bernie Sanders supporters who are angry. They're really upset about how everything's play, played out. She's got to have the party unified in order to beat Trump in the general. So what more does she have to do? She'll, she'll do it. I, I think if we look back to 2008 and uh, what were called Puma voters at the time, Hillary supporters who were so angry and all of the attention that the media paid to them, and ultimately they went over to President Obama, I think we're going to see the same thing here. The thing is, these guys, they're passionate, especially the young ones who have gotten involved in politics for the first time. This makes perfect sense. But as this election continues to get closer to uh, Election Day, there's going to be a, a really tough choice um, where they can either stay home or have what we saw in Cleveland be the future of this country. And I think Hillary has done a good job, or the campaign has done a good job just in the first day of really showing the difference. And, and, and that's, what, that's what this is gonna boil down to. It's, it's not gonna come down to name calling. It's not going to come down to uh, what tweet was most effective. It is what is being laid out on this stage, which clearly we all watched Cleveland and there are two different countries being represented. But One people, is Jimmy, a failure yeah. and the other is great, as Michelle Obama said. Well, well, that's your opinion because we do have some brand new polls that shows a very different opinion. A big convention boost, not entirely ex unexpected for Donald Trump, uh, putting him in the lead and the Republican nominee wasting no time touting his big gain in Virginia. Have you seen the polls that just came out from? We had like the biggest bounce that anyone can remember. We're leading, we're actually leading in the polls. And the CNN poll was so good, I may have to start liking them again. All right, so that new poll he's talking about, the CNN poll is putting him at 48% compared to Clinton, who is at 45%. So question now, Philip, is what does Trump need to do to keep this momentum going as we're now watching the DNC? Sure. You know, if I was to look at uh, what Hillary and, and Donald Trump are doing right now, I'd say it's chess versus checkers. Uh, Hillary is uh, playing a chess game where she's ch picking Tim Kaine to try to win uh, Florida. She's, Tim Kaine is going to help her consolidate the Spanish vote in, Flor in, in Florida and Tim Kaine in Virginia. But, uh, you know, Trump is playing checkers. And I know that sounds like I'm denigrating Trump. But from whether he can get elected or not, it may not be. I mean, he may be playing a simpler game that may end up winning this election by playing from a national stage rather than going state by state by state and trying to win each state. So I think that's how it's going to play out. I think Trump has said this worked for me in the primary, and I plan on it working in the general. Jammu, uh, obviously one of the topics that's on everyone's mind right now is terrorism and you know, homeland security. That was something that was not mentioned by a single speaker this evening or, or yesterday, the first day of the convention. And when you take a look at those polls, the same polls, it puts Donald Trump ahead of Hillary Clinton by double digits as to who would better handle terrorism. Same thing with the economy. So why didn't they mention uh, terrorism or Homeland Security on the first day. It, it will be mentioned. I mean, we've got three more days. Each day comes with a theme, and there's going to be an, a lot of focus on national security. I, I think, speaking of national security, we are sitting here talking about tweets and 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 uh, you know the chaos of both conventions. While it's likely that Russia hacked the DNC. 
This is serious stuff that has not. Yes, it scares the bejesus out of me. And when we have someone in Donald Trump cheerleading Putin. But what about Hillary Clinton and her private server? Right, this is a new reality that we face. What about it? <laughs> what about her private server? That has nothing to do with a foreign government coming into our political process mm -hmm. with an agenda, with, I think, an opening right. that they've seen that Donald Trump has given them. You that, don't think, that though, scares if they can me, hack the I think DNC, there needs to be they, more they conversation can definitely about hack that. a private server in someone's basement? Heather, um, I'm, I'm not talking about Hillary well. Clinton's server. I'm talking about a foreign governor, government coming into our country to get involved in our but Phil, presidential election. Philip, this goes election. right into yeah. Philip. This goes right into sure. to the people's concerns with national security. It, it does, but look, this is the talking points that were distributed by the Democrats. There's absolutely no evidence that there was any kind of coordination if the Russians had done this. Julian Assange has come out and said that that would be a false narrative and that this will He's continue leaking witness. out. I'm just saying He's this so is what I'm just looking for the evidence. I mean, where is the evidence other than it's a talking point being distributed by the Democrat National Committee no, and the Hillary they, campaign? No, they're actual experts who have said No, that, that there's coordination between the Trump campaign and the Russians. I'm no, just waiting for that said, evidence. It's not about the coordination. It. Yeah, it's about the interest. I'll also be interested to see what happens to some of those people um, some of those DNC leaders that were actually participating in those emails and what they said, what happens to them moving forward. Forward. Yeah, it could be damaging. All right, well, guys, they we're going to despicable. We're they gonna were despicable. Yeah, and, we're going to have to leave it there, though. Thanks so much for being with us this morning, Jamu, Philip. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.